In this tutorial, I will explain how to get a where I am to connect to existing database tables. I will also show you how to connect to an Active Directory or LDAP server. Normally, when you develop your applications, you don't need to worry where and how your data will be stored. You only select the database engine when you install a where I am, and after that, a where I am fully manages your database tables behind the scenes. It creates tables for new objects, deletes them when objects are deleted, and makes modifications to the structure of these tables whenever you add, modify, or delete attributes of business objects. In addition, a where I am automatically creates SQL select statements to read data from the database. All of this happens automatically behind the scenes, and you don't need to worry about the details or even know anything about the database technology. Sometimes, though, you need to use existing data stored in database tables created by other software or in network servers such as LDAP or Active Directory. There are at least two scenarios when you might want to do this. You have a legacy system that you want to completely transfer to a where I am. Or you have an existing database software system or systems or network server and you want to continue using this system. However, you also want to add an extension to this system to be managed by a where I am. For the first scenario, the recommended approach is to configure a new application using a where I am and then import the operational data from the legacy database into a where I am. For the second scenario, you can get a where I am to use the data stored in the existing database tables or a network server by configuring business objects with persistence option database existing external or LDAP. With this approach, you can configure new business objects managed automatically by a where I am but also have business objects that will be shared between a where I am and other software systems or network servers that already use the data. When you define a business object with the database existing external or LDAP persistence options, a where I am will automatically import columns of the required database tables or data definitions of the network server and convert them into business object attributes. You can get a where I am to read and write data to the existing database tables or network servers, but you cannot modify the structure of the existing tables. So you will not be able to add, delete, or rename attributes of such objects. Let's look at an example. Suppose we would like to provide a web user interface to one of the tables in the MySQL system database, which is also called MySQL. The table is called Help Topic and it contains help for MySQL. If you have the MySQL database, you can have a look at this table. The first thing we need to do is create a business object that corresponds to this table. So let's create a new business object and call it MySQL Help. Let's have a look at the persistence settings of this object here. By default, a where I am creates business objects with persistence type of a where I am automatic. These are business objects stored in the database that a where I am manages automatically. Since our database table already exists outside of a where I am, we need to change this setting to be database existing external. Then we click on the settings button. First, we need to select the database environment that describes how to connect to the existing database, MySQL in our case. If there are no database environments yet, we need to create one by clicking on the Add button. This is only done once, so if we have several tables in MySQL that we want to create business objects for, we only need to create the environment when we create the first business object. So we provide the name of the environment, MySQL, and then we need to select the database engine. A where I am offers several predefined database engines to help you specify connection parameters. If your database engine is not among the predefined engines, you need to select Custom. When we select a particular database engine, a predefined one 
or custom and where AIM displays connection parameters specific to this database engine. When you select the custom database engine, you need to make sure that you have the JDBC driver that allows connections to your database from Java. JDBC drivers exist virtually for all known databases, so AwareAIM can connect to pretty much any database. Many database vendors include JDBC drivers as part of their database offerings. If they don't, you can almost always find a third-party JDBC driver. A JDBC driver is usually distributed as a file with a .jar extension. You need to make sure that you put this jar file in the AwareIM Tomcat lib directory. Then you need to specify a fully qualified name of the driver class and connection URL string. You need to check the documentation of your JDBC driver for details. In our case though, we can select MySQL from the list of predefined database engines. For MySQL database, we need to specify MySQL account credentials, machine name where MySQL server is running, if not the local machine, and port where MySQL is listening for requests, if not the default port. We will use the default settings and only provide the username and password, which is actually blank in our case. And of course, I forgot to enter the name of the database that we are connecting to. It's the system database called MySQL. So after we create the database environment, we need to specify the name of the table of view in the existing database that we want to use. So we provide the name of the table help topic. And then we click on the discover attributes button. At this point, AwareAIM will automatically discover all database columns that the specified table or view has and convert them into the corresponding attributes. The results are displayed in the attributes table here. We should then define a primary key for the database columns and check the attribute or attributes that uniquely identify the record in the database table. For example, a unique ID, a unique surname, email address, and so on. If we do not define a primary key, AwareAIM will be able to perform queries on the business object, but it will not be able to display individual instances, create new instances, or delete the existing ones. In our case, we have the ID attribute here that we will use as the primary key of the record. That's it. Our business object is now ready and we can use it in queries, forms, business rules, processes, and so on, just like we use any other business object. Let's, for example, define a query that will display some attributes of this object. So we create a new query, which will look for all instances of the MySQL help object. And then we'll go to the display details dialog and we'll select name and URL as attributes to display. And then we put the example and description on the expansion of the row. So we'll display description followed by an example like this. We refer to the attribute names in curly brackets here. Description and example. Let's also define an operation that allows us to navigate to the form of the record. Let's see now how this works. So I put the version under test. And log into the application using the browser. I will run our query using the system menu for administrators. So we can see all the help information from MySQL here. 
the description and example are on the row expansion. We can navigate to the form of the object and even change or delete this data if need be. I don't really want to do this here though. So that's how simple it is to use the power of AwareIM to provide a web user interface to already existing database tables and software systems. Not only can you connect like this to existing database tables, but you can also connect and provide web user interface to the Active Directory of your server or to any other LDAP server. Let me show you. Here I have a small freeware program that allows me to connect to any LDAP server. I have connected to a Debian LDAP server, access to which is freely available. This tree here shows the entries that I have in this server. Let's connect to the server from where I am and display all available hosts, for example. These are the hosts that we have. Doing it is very similar to what we just did for the existing database table connection. First, we need to create a new business object representing a Debian host. And we'll call it Debian host. This time, we will select LDAP as persistence type for this object. And we click on the settings button again. Just like with database connection, we need to define connection to our LDAP server first. Again, it only needs to be done once for all objects managed by this server. So I enter the name of this server and specify the machine name. It doesn't require any username or password and it listens on the default port 389. Now we need to provide a distinguished name of any entry on this server that will correspond to a business object instance. Let's take any host entry, for example the first one. We can find out the distinguished name from our LDAP viewer program. So this is the first entry. And this bit here defines the distinguished name. And we also need to provide a distinguished name of the parent node, which will be just this. Now we can click on the Discover Attributes button. And AwareAIM will automatically determine business object attributes that correspond to the LDAP attributes of this and all other similar entries. So the business object is ready now. So when we log into our application now, we can search for Debian host objects using the administrator menu like this. And here we can see all our LDAP entries and we can modify them if necessary. Note that a popular Microsoft Active Directory is also an LDAP server so you can connect to it in very much the same way. Finally, I wanted to say a few words about the Not Persisted option for business objects. This option means that the instance of the object exists for the duration of the user request only and is not persisted permanently, either in a database or anywhere else. This can be useful if attributes of your business object represent a set of parameters for a query, for example. You can define query parameters using the Asked at Runtime option. Or using search forms. This is explained in the query tutorials. However, the forms displayed for these options do not force the users to enter them. If they don't, all records are displayed. Using a parameter object gives you much more control on how the form behaves. This parameter object only needs to be used in a query, so that there is no reason to store it in the database. Let me quickly show you how to use a parameter object in a query. 
Let's say that in our CRM sample application that manages customers from previous tutorials, we need to search for customers by the first and last names, and we want to force the user to enter both values. So we define a parameter object called customer param, and we define first name and last name attributes. And we make both attributes mandatory. Value must be provided as ticked. We also select not persisted as a persistent option for this object. Then we define a query that assumes that this parameter object is in the context of the query. And the query will look like this. Finally, we need a process that puts it all together. The first rule of the process will show the form of the parameter object. And the second rule will display a query. Let's see how this works. So I logged into our little CRM application here, and I will run our process using the administrator menu. The process starts, and it displays the form of the parameter object. The form is quite crude, but don't worry about it. And you can see that the, both first name and last name are mandatory. I have to enter values for both attributes. And when I do, the appropriate record is displayed. 